all of us seated around you, as you continue coming, God will use him mightily to bless your life also in Jesus' name. Our ushers are around you there. They will give you a slip to flee. Please collect it from their hand. Fill those information with capital letter and return same back to them. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Please listen to our service day's announcement. On Monday, we is a day of Bible study. We come here to listen to the word of God. It's a time of digging deep into the depth of God's knowledge. We brethren from Bagada, Ketusumolu, we always come on Monday. But for example, Lagos Island are joining us today. But next month, to our service day's announcement. On Monday, we is a day of Bible study that instruction. Sunday worship service. Next Sunday, by the grace of God, 19th of March, 2023, the theme of the Impact Academy is change to change the world. God will change our children. We will be missing in rejoice. Jesus, the Savior rings 9 a.m. from in the morning. All workers, workers in trainings, and interested members of the church, and other workers in other church and their members are expected to be invited for this program. And as we invite them, and they responded, the Lord will bless them in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. National Easter Retreat. National Easter Retreat comes up from Thursday 6th to Tuesday 10th, April 2023, on Group Basics. We should start the planning and all arrangements we should start in earnest. And uh, as the shower of blessing will shower down on that day, you will not be missing in Jesus' name. I say you will not be missing in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now to sing the congregational song. We are singing from our hymn books, gospel hymns and song, 213. Two, one, three. Rejoice, the Lord is king. Your Lord and king adore. Mortars, give thanks and sing. And triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice, again I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Savior rings. The God of truth and love. When he had poured our stains... He took his seat above. Lift up your head, heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail. He rules over earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Savior given. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in glorious hope. Jesus, the just shall come, and take his servants up to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel voice, the trump of God shall sound rejoice.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The second book of Moses, called Exodus. The second book of Moses, called Exodus. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locust into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy fathers' fathers have seen, since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us, let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go. And your little ones, look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, but in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well, I will see thy face again no more. Chapter 11 And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We remain standing as we give our tithe and offering. Let's bring out our tithe and offering for our posts and our posses and our bags. Let's bring it out and lift it up as we pray. Let's lift it up as we pray. Our Father, we thank you for this blessing that you are blessing us with, spiritual and physical. Out of the blessing physical that you have been blessing us, we bring this one to you. We pray that you will accept it in Jesus' name. As we offer unto you, you bless it abundantly in return for us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please drop your offering in the bags that are being passed around you. Let's drop our tithe and offering into the bag that are passing around us.
his glory. We will walk in his beauty. We'll be filled with his duty for the things he has done. Just let me leave my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain and the praise, let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved me. With His power, He has raised me. To God be the glory for the things He has done. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I'll bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
My name is Margaret Adeluba. Um, by the grace of God, I got healed of a growth that was not known to me. I thought it was a um, sore throat. It happens around this region. And I've gone for the first round of medication. Good under the tongue can be due to formation of cysts, a kind of a covering that contains water or contains anything. They call it granular. They don't usually resolve on their own. Cases like that too, are usually treated with surgery. There was no improvement. And so I was making an attempt on going for the second one. But I remember that GCK was around the corner. So I concluded that let me attend the GCK first after that before I would know what to do. But to God be the glory, that faithful night got to control. And after the final amen, everything was over, okay, and got busted. That was how I was free from the good by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. It's calmness in the thoughts running in your mind. Stillness in the questions racing in your head. And confidence in the meeting of your marathon of needs. Do not miss your chance at never-ending peace. And now it's time for GCK Live from Cameroon, the land of glory and promise. Come experience the compassion of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, from March 23rd through March 28th, 2023, at 1600 hours GMT daily, and global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday, opposite Amour Mazam Bus Travel Agency and Dobo Bonaberry Douala Cameroon. International evangelist Pastor W.F. Kumi will be landing with this same Jesus, the Prince of Peace. 
Also featuring at the same venue, a conference for ministers and professionals to be equipped for wonders in ministry. With Impact Academy for teenagers, campus students, and young professionals tagged, Change to Change Your World. The Global Choir will enrich your soul as we also bring you special guest music ministration by Dan Lewitton. GCK Live from Africa and straight to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before you can say that effectively, number one, you come, you're a child of God. You come, you're born again. You come, and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, you have been converted, you have been changed, your life has been turned around and you have become a member of the family, a child to the Heavenly Father. It's only then you can say, lead us not into temptation. When you hate temptation, when you turn your back against temptation, if you love something, you cannot be holding to that thing and say, Lord, Lead me not into this. What you're holding on to that is when you have been saved and you don't take joy in those temptations anymore. And you don't take joy in those evil things anymore. It's then you can say, Lord, I don't want it. I don't like it. I don't desire it. I don't want to go that direction anymore. You can help me lead us not into temptation. Remember after your salvation that you are telling the Lord, I used to fall into that. I used to smoke that. I used to drink that. I used to be leered and ties into that. But now I'm saved. I'm different. I don't want that anymore. Your past is cleansed. Your life is forgiven that's when you can honestly say lead us not into temptation god if the trouble is there and you're not even invited and people are breaking bottles and they are doing whatever with one another and then you go there how can it preserve you from the trouble already you are the one transporting yourself and going there to that trouble. If the Lord is going to deliver us from trouble, from trial, from tribulation, from temptation, we keep ourselves away. The grace of God has now come into our lives and things are different now. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Lord, how do I succeed? I'll teach you the way you will go to succeed. How do I overcome? I will teach you now. If you say bye-bye to the Bible, bye-bye to Christian fellowship, bye-bye to church attendance, bye-bye to a Bible-believing church, how will the Lord instruct you? When he instructed Israel, he sent to Moses. When he instructed the children of Israel in Canaan is Saint Joshua. And when he said he wanted to instruct Israel in the new covenant, is Saint Jesus, I will instruct thee and teach thee. How do you get instruction without an instructor? How do you get teaching without the teacher? The Lord is saying, Don't abandon. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Get to a Bible-believing church. Get to a church honoring Christ, honoring the Father. Get to a church that will show you the way of the Lord. You don't sit back at home. You'll find a way to link up 
with the church. And when the Lord guides, he will not guide you into failure. He will not guide you into defeat. He will not guide you into danger. He will guide you with his eyes. You are going to rise up. You are going to pray that the Lord will empower you. The Lord will energize you. Everything we have heard, the Lord will translate everything to your personal experience. Brothers and sisters, we should specifically pray for ourselves first as citizens in the kingdom that we will not expose ourselves unto anything that will lead us into temptation. Especially in these days of uh, technology that you go into the night, it is not always the, th it's not only the things you want to see that you see that you'll be disciplined. And of course, we keep on hearing strange sounds here and there. Thank God for what you have heard. And thank God that he will not allow us to be tempted more than that we are able to bear. And as we pray for ourselves, it's good we also pray for the many people that cannot be praying against temptation that are among us. They are with us at the Bible study today. They have not given their lives to Christ, though they keep on coming to the church. Let's pray for them that that grace of God that has appeared unto them, they will rightly appropriate that grace for their deliverance, for their salvation. And they will also become citizens in the kingdom. And then they will have the assurance of overcoming temptations at all times. And as we pray for them also, let's remember our new converts that the Lord will help them. Any temptation not to continue with the Lord, any temptation not to identify with the people of God who will truly guide them in the path of safety, that the Lord will give them the sunning heart and then they will overcome such temptations. As we pray for them, by the grace of God, God will help them. And particularly, there is a temptation every one of us must pray against at this time. Temptation to be lukewarm in the service of God. Temptation to withdraw. Temptation to be slothful. The injunction of the Lord is that whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. But what do we see? Many are not really living up to the expectation. As regards the global crusade we have been holding, many don't talk, many don't join at all, many don't come at all, come out at all, and yet they say they are believers, and they don't know they are falling into temptation of laziness, temptation of indifference, temptation of uh, uh, slothfulness, which the Lord has, has, has corrected us upon. Be not slothful in business, but be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Any temptation that contradicts this must. Be guarded against and must be overcome. We pray unto the Lord that the Lord will help us all and will go forward. And, and uh, uh, it's good for us at this time to remember that next week, just next week, we have the Douala Cameroon Global Crusade. It's another time that God wants to reach out to the whole universe and save much and expand his kingdom. Let us pray for our Father and the Lord who is leading us in this program, and all who have one assignment or the other, that the hand of the Lord will be upon them all. And that as he leads us in this program, the anointing of the Lord will be wonderful upon him, much more than what he had experienced in the previous programs, to the intent that every place, right from Alpha location to the remotest part of the entire globe, that this program will be holding, that God's power we turn the places to place of places of deliverance, of holiness, of salvation, of reconciliation with God. A place where sins hold upon people will be broken. A place where sicknesses will be cancelled. A place, a place where infirmities will be removed. And all Satan's work will be flushed out. Let's pray for him and let's pray for Mama too. That as they go together... The power of the Almighty God will overwhelm them, will shield them, and in the hand of the Lord they will be born. We also pray that the Almighty God will use all other ministers of God for the program. That at the end of the program, it will be joy unlimited from Cameroon to all parts of the world. Let us also pray that the Lord will preserve all the converts and whatever benefit anybody gets from that program, such so will be permanent in Jesus' name. 
Let's round up our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you. We know you are doing more than what you have asked from you. We know you, you will help us. And we will not subject ourselves to temptations. We will not open our lives to temptation. But by your grace, as you have told us that we are more than conquerors, as citizens in your kingdom, we will be more than conquerors over temptations. And for our converts, you will help them too. So that they will not expose themselves to temptations any longer in the name of Jesus. And as for the coming program, Father, glorify yourself. We have seen you walk in times past. This time, we let us see greater things to your glory and to our honor. Thank you because you have answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. As we come, I will pray, Lord, that the Bible study will penetrate every heart and give us progress in our Christian journey, in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, you use us to help other people to come to the Lord and to be strong in the Lord, in the grace of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming back to the book of Daniel. At present, we're studying the book of Daniel every Monday at this period. And today we're looking at Daniel chapter 2, verses 34 and 35, and 44 and 45. Open your Bible to Daniel chapter 2, verse 34. Thou sowest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon the feet that were of iron, and clay and break them to pieces. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth that's the dream that nebuchadnezzar had in brief now come to verse 44 in verse 44 it says and in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom that which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be led to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Verse 45, it says in verse 45, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out, of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. That's the dream that uh, God had given to Nebuchadnezzar. It wasn't to live for himself. It wasn't to live for Babylon. It wasn't to live for the present kingdom at that time. It was for all the kingdoms of the world until the coming of Christ. When we talk about the coming of Christ, there are two aspects of the coming of Christ. Number one, he came the first time to save, to deliver and to purify and to prepare the people, everyone, for the kingdom of God. That was the time that the Bible talks about, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He came for the first time as savior. But now he's coming the second time 
as the smiting stone. It's coming the second time. Before, between the first time he came and the second time that he will come, there will be kingdoms of the world. At first, we have the kingdom of Babylon, and then we have the Middle Persian Empire, another kingdom, and then the Grecian kingdom, another kingdom, and then the Roman a kingdom. All those kingdoms have been operating and reigning all over the world. There were world empires. And when Christ came, it was the time of the Roman Empire. And that uh, the Roman Empire will be the last in this interpretation of the revelation of the dream. And then uh, at the end, Christ has now, he has now saved many people, he sanctified many people, he purged them from their sins, he has purified them. What we are waiting for now, which is the latter part of this dream, is the rapture. When Christ will come from heaven, and those who have died in Christ, and those who are still alive in Christ, the dead will be raised up, resurrection. And then those who are alive will be cut off to meet the Lord in the air. That is the rapture. After that, there will be seven years of the great tribulation. That is the time that the Antichrist will be reigning. And the time of the Antichrist is actually the final part of the Roman government. The world will be under that great emperor, the Antichrist, the one that will subject the world to a lot of suffering. And then, seven years after the rapture, Christ will come. And when Christ comes, he'll destroy the Antichrist. He'll destroy the kingdoms of the world at that time under the Antichrist. And he will set up his own millennial reign all over the world. That's what he's saying about the stone that smote that idol, that smote all those kingdoms. And then after they are smashed, after they are stricken, after they are smitten, they become like chaff, and then the wind of the judgment of God will wipe them up, will take them away, and Christ will, ex will uh, kind of establish his own millennial kingdom all over the world. That's why it says the stone became a mountain, and the mountain filled the whole earth, and he has a kingdom, and he has a dominion that will be forever and ever. It will never be displaced again. It will not be destroyed, but it will rule forever and ever. From the millennial kingdom, they will have the everlasting, the eternal kingdom where Christ will reign and the saints of God, the children of God, will reign with him. That's the summary of what we're looking at. Today, we're looking at the striking prophecy of the smiting, smiting stone. The striking prophecy, the Old Testament revealed that the stone, that's our savior, and as a sovereign, it was the smitten stone, the smitten savior. It was smitten, it was broken, it was slain, it was crucified, it died for our sins. That's the smitten stone, the smitten savior. But then he comes back as the sovereign. He comes back as the ruler. He comes back as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he will not be smitten at that time. He'll be the smitten stone the mighty sovereign and then in his power supernatural power he will reign the message today the study today the striking prophecy of the smitten's mighty stone. We're dividing this to 30 parts. Number one, we're looking at the divinity of the mighty stone. The divinity of the mighty stone, that's the stone that was caught without human hand. And then it came and struck at the image. And that mighty stone divine in origin. He has his deity because he's the son of God and he is God himself. That's why he has divinity, the divinity of the mighty stone. Number two, the day of the supreme stone. In the days of the kings, that is, Babylon had its own day. 
Middle Persian Kingdom had its own day, and the Grecian government had its own day, and the Roman Kingdom had their own day. In the days of those kings, in the days of those emperors, in the days of those empires, then Christ will have its own day. The day of the supreme stone. We're looking at number three, the dominion. He'll have a dominion. He'll have a kingdom. And his kingdom and dominion will never come to an end, will never be destroyed, will never be displaced, and will never be under any other dominion. He's the final one. He's the future one. He's the forever one that will reign forever and ever. The dominion of the sobering stone. Let, let's look at it from number one. Number one, we're looking at the divinity of the smited stone. The three things we're looking at here, we're looking at uh, number one, the supernatural stone. Number two, seven things actually. Uh, then the stumbling stone. Then number three, the scorn stone. Number four is the sure corner stone. And then number five, uh, the smiting stone. Number six, the shattering stone. And number seven, the sovereign stone. And all about Christ. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about Christ in a universal way. When he came the first time, and when he's coming, he'll be coming the second time. Look at number one here. Number one, he is the supernatural stone. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 and verse 34. It says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. That's not natural. If you're going to cut any branch of the tree, there should be a hand that is making use of the axe. If you're going to cut out a stone from a mountain, there should be a hand that is uh, getting that stone out. But this one says that that stone was cut out without hands. What does that mean? Without the human agency without the natural agents. Have you noticed the prophecy of the birth of Jesus Christ, supernatural, without human help, and then the conception, supernatural, without a human age, and the birth of Jesus, supernatural, without a human age, and the life he lived, a, a, a great life, a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, a life of heaven on earth, supernatural, without human help, and the way he endured all the trials, and all the persecution, everything supernatural, and the wisdom he manifested when they asked him a question that could have dribbled him wisdom from heaven without human help and